Well, Nick Sirianni is definitely on the hot seat, but even after multiple disaster losses and player frustration, why is he confident in keeping his job? And what the heck is going on between him and AJ Brown? Plus, Josh Sweat and others appear to be losing faith, so let's talk about it. But first, let's run it. What's up guys? All right, let's start with the college football playoffs since they took place yesterday and man, we had a couple really good games, but also a few suspect play calls. Perhaps the most questionable from Alabama in overtime when they decided to run a QB draw into a stacked box. Surprising, I know that it didn't work out, but I'm sure Eagles offensive coordinator Brian Johnson was somewhere supporting that decision. I mean, you look good when you strike out, man. When I strike out, man, it looks nasty. I don't know. I mean, for some reason, we just want to keep dialing up those quarterback runs. Although maybe it was Sirianni who was a big fan since he and Bama OC Tommy Reese were both on the Chargers at the same time. The difference, though, is that unlike BJ and Sirianni, Nick Saban knows what a bad play call is and when to just admit the mistake. So the fact that it didn't work made it a really bad call. You know what I mean? But Tommy just felt like the best thing that we could do um, was have a quarterback run. Look, they still lost, so nothing's going to make it better, but I can appreciate Saban just calling it like it is. Unlike Sirianni, who still maintains that the inexcusable first and 20 sequence against Arizona was aggressive play calling. And Brian Johnson's going to die on that hill. The first down, we get four. Second and 16, you know, Buda makes a fantastic play. You know, it was a play that, that had a chance to be um, really, really big and be a big hit. You know, credit to, to Buda Baker. He made a, a fantastic play. Uh, on that particular play. And then, you know, what ends up happening is now you lose four yards, and so you're third and 20. It's crazy, but can he actually believe that? Let's take a look at it. Yeah, I guess Buddha made a good play, but it's not like he was the only cards player over there. So on a second and 16, everyone knew it was coming. Obviously a no-brainer that A.J. Brown would be frustrated, and countless other players too. Plus, when the All-Pro receiver hasn't scored a touchdown in five straight games, the longest streak in his career, by the way, I think you've got your answer as an offense. Of course, Nick wasn't buying it, yet said he's tried to make amends with A.J., but that he's going to keep those conversations private because that's what you do in a coach-player relationship, acknowledging that everyone is frustrated right now. I said I was sorry. All right, I guess good for him for trying, but personally, I think it's a much bigger deal than he wants to admit. When teams have personnel, but they can't resolve issues, that's a head coach issue. That's the Chargers defense with Brandon Staley. It's better since he left. Nick Sariani, they were outscored 29-10 to 10 by Arizona. That's a bad defense. They have the receiver talent, the tight end talent, the O-line talent, the left tackle talent, the running back talent, the quarterback's talented. It's all there. Outside of the tush push, what are they offensively? A.J. Brown has not had a touchdown. He didn't have one in December. Not one. How? This football team no longer believes in how they're being coached. They don't believe in what Nick Sirianni is selling. That's pretty damn evident to me, you know? When A.J. Brown can get a, a slant or a stop route any freaking time he wants to, and you're running quarterback sweeps, are you kidding me? Here's the thinking the fans are getting me. If you're going to fire Doug Peterson after he won a Super Bowl, right, why wouldn't you fire Nick Sirianni after he lost one? Are they going to fire that guy in a playoff season when he has the highest winning percentage in the history of the franchise. Yes. Yes, you know I why? think they are. I mean, it's just getting too hard to ignore at this point. But okay, give him credit. Nick's rhetoric worked at times, but Cowherd said it best. If you're a struggling company with issues and have a good CEO, you'd expect the issues to eventually be addressed with positive change. But we haven't seen anything work. However, despite speculation that Sirianni's on the hot seat and has lost the locker room, he's not exactly buying that. No, I'm not concerned about that. What, you know, we're just we're just looking to get the get back on the right track. Um, you know, last week against the the Giants, got back on the in the win column. Obviously, not not didn't didn't happen the exact same way we wanted it to happen, but got in the win column. And then, hey, we dropped this one this week. You know, and and the next thing is just to go back to work. And I'm not concerned about that. You know, I know. You know, I know the players and the and the coaches we have on this team. We got great leaders. Uh, that all we want to do is right the ship. Um, I'm I'm confident that we can do that, and and that's where we are right now. 
Okay, he can choose to live in denial if he wants to, but we know things are bad, including just basic communication issues on the field. Like, everyone knows this, but the disjointedness of this team doesn't feel like an 11-win team most of the time. And yeah, obviously, it's not just the offense with the defense ushering opponents down the field with ease, which I talked more about this in the defensive struggles continuing post-Patricia move, but Johnny Page and others have shared how it's worse than we may have thought, saying, spending my Tuesday morning legitimately getting angry at how bad some of these defensive calls were this week. Sometimes you think it's going to be bad, but the film shows a different story. Not this week. It is brutal. This is the worst. I mean, nothing really surprises me at this point. Honestly, it's just infuriating. And Josh Wett doesn't even know anymore. With NJ.com's Chris Franklin reporting that the Eagles DN said, I think I've run out of answers. We keep giving up plays. That's all I can say. It feels like I've been saying the same thing every week, but we have to get on the same page and do what we have to to finally win. Okay, yeah, we'd all love to see that. And I don't blame Sweat for being upset because let's remember, this isn't the first time he's voiced frustration towards the game plan, saying after the Dallas embarrassment, we're not where we're supposed to be. Me personally, on my side, I feel I definitely could have done better, but it's too hard. I'm just not used to when we apply pressure well that we don't take care of each other all the time. That's what we need to be better on. Too many escapes. I'm just not used to it. I'm used to rushing so well against good opponents. It's both ways. That's why I'm frustrated. Again, who would blame him? Now, it's worth pointing out that Sweaty J hasn't exactly set the world on fire either after registering six and a half sacks through the first nine games this season, only to go sackless over his last seven contests. Heck, the defensive unit as a whole only has three in the last three games. However, Josh has actually been doing his job if you want to judge him solely on pressures. Because according to Pro Football Focus, the 26-year-old has 63 total pressures, 15 hits, and 41 hurries in 2023, compared to just 51 total pressures, 9 hits, and 27 hurries in 2022. But okay, yeah, Sweat's definitely being asked to play a much higher snap count this year than he was last season. Yet if you want to question his play, the defensive end told Dave Zangaro, you can just turn on the film and see how close I am to sacks. We've been battling with pass defense all year, whether that's D-line, whether that's secondary, whatever. The ball's out fast, but I'm winning. I got more pressures this year than I had probably combined in my career, more hits, and I'm winning rushes. It's just not showing up how I want it to. I'm affecting the quarterback. That's all I can say. I am affecting the quarterback more than I ever had in my career. The sacks just haven't been hitting, but I've been rushing better than I have in my career. I'm even way better than I was last year with my rushes in terms of how much I'm around the quarterback, how much I'm hitting, and how much I'm pressuring. That's what keeps me going. Whether the sacks come or not, I'm going to keep affecting the quarterback. All right, look, I agree that individually, Sweat has been productive at getting around the quarterback. But at the same time, like Anthony DeBono of Outside the Birds talked about last week, both Sweat and Hassan need to be more disciplined with their pass rush. Either way, though, it sounds like the guys may be starting to lose faith in Matt Patricia's scheme. And Reddick is just as confused as 94 with the defensive struggles. Man, I don't even, I like, uh, Lord, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Um, you know, evidently they had a, a, a good game plan and, you know, they, they came out and did what they, you know, what they wanted to do. So, uh, I, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know. We, I don't know. We, I think everybody, we, back to what we were saying before, everybody got to look at themselves and go from there right, at the end of the day, you know. Um, saying on one person, and it ain't, it's, it's a collective effort, uh, and it just wasn't good enough. All right, Reddick did say that we still have playoffs in front of us, obviously, and there's still time to turn it around. However, the vibes just feel lost for this team. Kind of like Josh Sweat on this pass rush versus the cards. Sorry, not meaning to pick on him, but I just felt like a good visual representation for the state of things with the D. However, like you're all probably aware, BG believes the defense is really close to clicking. And like I said before, I can appreciate the positivity, although I'm much closer to Reed Blankenship's assessment of the defense, sharing that it's been our techniques, execution, and detail. We have to be more detailed. We say the same shit every week. We have to come together and not fall apart when things don't go our way. That's when you have to become an even better team. It's just falling back on execution at the end of the day. In this league, we have to execute at the highest level possible or we will get beat, regardless of who it is. Everybody gets paid just like we do. Okay, well, that and also the coaching needs to be better, but we already knew that. And while they definitely need to get things figured out, I'm not sure I want many of the starters playing Sunday, especially considering the weather forecast of a rain-snow mix plus the terrible conditions at MetLife anyway. So my vote would be to rest the guys and then see if we can muster a respectable showing in Tampa. But how about you guys? All right, reminder for the live show tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern. Come hang out with us, vent session, whatever you want to call it. And also going to have another cool giveaway soon, so make sure to subscribe and turn the notifications on. This has been the Philly Special.